Hey guys, how you doing? It's Brad with ATREpodcast.com, all things real estate. I am so excited to introduce my next guest. Dan Roshan is a real estate agent that lives in Clifton, Virginia. Now he lives with his wife, Tracy, and daughter, Maggie. He owns and runs the Greetings Virginia sales network at greetingsvirginia.com. Dan enjoys spending time with his family, going to the gym, riding his bicycle. He enjoys racing in triathlons. He reads, he writes, he does improv. Dan is a veteran of the United States Army, a frequent speaker, and often quoted about the real estate market. He has been featured on the Nightly News with Brian Williams, the Today Show, and CNBC. Welcome, Dan. Thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure. How are you? Very impressive. Thank you. I studied improv as well. What, what, what kind of improv do you do? And, and are you an actor? Do you do it for fun? So uh, if you may be familiar with a gentleman in New York City who wrote a book, and I'm completely blanking on his book, yet I'm sure that your listeners will know exactly who I'm talking about um, because he's on uh, like those A&E shows, et cetera. And in his book, he recommended for real estate agents to take improv. Yeah. And I actually shared that book with my team. And then, of course, my team had said, hey, Dan, let's do improv. And it's something that I was grateful to do because this, you know, has the philosophy of yes and. Yeah. You know, so you just basically you say yes to whatever's thrown in front of you. You just go yes and. And that's a skill that as a real estate agent, we've, you know, we often are, are you know, could, we're often confronted with things that might be a little bit unusual, right. might be, you know, something that we're not exactly sure you know, exactly, you know, we may not have dealt with it in the past and, you know, just having that be quick with it and just roll with it is, has been useful. Yeah. It keeps you on your toes. I've done a lot of improv in my life. I studied it for years with Richard Brander. We did the Meisner technique and uh, it's, it's a phenomenal thing for a real estate agent. I did it for acting and it transpired that along with my psychology training uh, has, has really been beneficial. But uh, so, Dan, you sell over in uh, the West Virginia area, Washington, D.C., Clifton. Is, is that pretty much your primary uh, focus? Northern Virginia, not West Virginia. Excuse me. Northern Virginia. Yeah, that's OK. I right was outside. To say, Country mama, take me home. West Virginia. Hey, let's do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, right outside Washington, D.C. That's excellent. How's the market over there? You know, it's it's thriving. Uh, it's thriving. Uh, you know, I primarily work with sellers, so. I'm grateful for the market that we're in right now. Uh, the buyer's agents that I work with are not as grateful uh, because uh, oh. you know there's a lack of inventory right now. It's amazing how limited the inventory is. You know, it's interesting. Um, I interview real estate agents from all over the country and, and we're all pretty much in the same boat. Uh, I'm a listing agent as well. And everything is selling for about 100 to $150,000 over list price, especially in Los Angeles where I'm based. Um, so it's, it's really, it's, it's been a great market. Um, were you a little nervous with COVID when it first started? Uh, how'd you pivot? I was a lot, I was a lot nervous with COVID. You, me too. Not a little nervous. No, my goodness. I, so March of 2020, we were all hands on deck for first thing we did was cut our expenses yeah, and our expenses are still down. Right. I'm like, it's been, it's been a blessing in from a business perspective. Right. Uh, now, I, I wish that we weren't experiencing this, right? If I had a choice, we wouldn't be yet. Right. Um, it forced me to take business decisions that were healthy. Uh, we cut expenses. We doubled down on our triple down, quadruple down on our lead generation activities. And we haven't let up yet. And um, and my expenses are still down as well. So, Incredible. Um, yeah, so taking those actions, um, I think it's healthy to have that in any market, yet Sometimes when there's uncertainty, that's when you're like, oh, goodness, let me let me take care of some, some things yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. And where do you see the market headed uh, in 2021? Well, I really see two markets. So there's the market, at least in, you know, so I can talk specifically to the Northern Virginia area, uh, which I think is going to be pretty, pretty common across the country. Um, you have the higher level inventory, the higher level priced homes, and then the lower priced homes. So the higher priced homes haven't been impacted at all throughout the pandemic. Their prices actually have escalated. It's the lower priced homes that I believe are going to have the, um, uh, the unfortunate outcome of um, perhaps uh, you know, declining in prices. Right. And I think that that's gonna be as a cause of, if you're looking at who is going to purchase those, it's gonna be typically gonna be service workers, it's gonna be people that were most affected by the pandemic 
it's going to be lower wage earners, and many of them are in forbearances today. That's right. Those forbearances at some point will cease, and when that occurs, if they're still struggling in their professions and their employment, then uh, then they're going to struggle to 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 pay their pay their mortgage, and that's going to impact the lower priced inventory. Right. No, I I, I tend to agree. Where where do you get most of your clients from, Dan? Well, I've been selling since 2007, so I have. Um, yeah, I say when you get started in real estate sales, it's like getting a, it's like a swinging a, a, a swivel yeah. or, a, or a pendulum. And at some point that, that pendulum just keeps swinging and swinging and you have momentum. You're still, so, you're still a rookie, by the way. I uh, know you've been, I, this is 1999 or 98, 98 right? Yeah, man. Yeah, 98. But, but you started at the, at the, you thought everything was rosy and went. Fume. <laughs> no, I started when it went fume. I started in 2007. Yeah, but it was fume already. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, yeah. I know it's in 2007. I still had a pretty good year, um, yeah. but then 2008, 2007 is when it started to decline. I started a good year. 2008 on for a little while was rough, but yeah. So good. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, I want. Thank you. I want to go back. So so. We, we get about a third of our business from our sphere of influence, yep. from uh, referrals, past clients. About a third of our business comes from the internet and about a third of our business comes from uh, for sale by owners, expires, absentee owners, circle prospecting, that type of stuff. Are you just getting on the phone? Are you doing a, using a three-line dialer or just getting on? What do you, what do, you do? So we've actually just paused our, so Mojo is the yeah. only, I think Mojo is the only one I know of that has a three-line dialer. That's who I was using, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was doing it myself, I, do, I would do the three-line dialer just because I'm impatient and I, I just want to be on the phone. I got you, man. Too, right. <laughs> yeah. So um, so we just uh, paused on Mojo primarily because I'm realizing that we have a lot of opportunity within our database already. And so what we're doing now is we're just mining what's already there and cultivating what's already there and reconnecting. Uh, I'm fortunate I've got a team of inside sales agents that, that I work with. And you know, so their job is really more converting than adding to the pipeline because we really can't get to everything that's already in the pipeline. Yeah, good for you, that's great. You got, a lot of, you got a lot of business. Dan, let me ask you, what's an average morning for you? So I wake up at some ungodly, I'm the guy that you, you want to hate, right? The guy that's like, morning. how can that guy get up at 4.30 in the morning? Yeah. Um, I'm that guy. I haven't always been that guy. I used to go to bed at 4.30 when I was in my 20s. And now I'm, yeah, I'm in my later 40s. And now I'm getting up at 4.30. And I, um, you know, I, I, I do the, you know, I do the miracle morning. I don't do, I don't do all of the miracle morning stuff. I do two or three this morning. I, I got in, let's see, I read, I exercised. And uh, I did a little bit of journaling. Oh, you know what? I also read uh, my daughter, who she's 10 years old. Uh, she writes these little notes to me about once a year and I have them on my desk behind me. And uh, so I started my day after, after I did all that and I was getting ready to start working. And I read those uh, two of those letters from my daughter. Uh, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is great. <laughs> I wish I could turn back time. Um, yeah, let me ask you. So that, that's interesting. So you do that and then you, you go... Well, you probably don't go in the office. You're working from home? I do go in the office. The office is, what, about 16 stairs below my living area. Oh. And so I'm very disciplined in regards to the way that I approach my business. I start my, my work a day every morning at 8.30. And mm -hmm. for the first hour, there's meetings with the team. And then from 9.30 to noon, there's lead generation. From noon to one, if my daughter's at home, there's thought is, uh, is scheduled to have lunch with her. She yeah. started going back to school now. Uh, and then from one to six, there's appointments, follow up meetings like this. And that's a pretty typical day. I'll, I literally, I treat the 830 though. I treat it like I'm punching a clock. Good. It could be 829. And I like, I've got like struggling to get a coffee and my wife's like, you know, slow me down. I'm like, sweetie, I got to get to work. Right. I got one minute to be there. I got to get to work. Yes. I, I literally treat it like a job. Listen, this is my downstairs office. So I, I guess yeah, you you. I'm the same way. Um, so I was reading up about you a bit, and uh, I think you and I have similar temperaments and personalities, and, and I, I live by a motto. Uh, if you go to any of my websites uh, for ATRE, you'll see I live by a, have an attitude of gratitude, and that was my dad's motto, and I, and I took it from him and, and really have ran with it. And I know that you like to teach a lot, and you like to talk a lot about having empathy, and uh, I think 
a lot of people don't put themselves in other people's shoes and really realize what that person's walking in. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that if you wouldn't mind. So there's two things there that are, are really, really important. For 10 years, I just mentioned that you know, I've got a 10 year old daughter and every morning when she goes to school or she leaves the house or I leave the house when I used to leave the house, I would share with her, the last thing I say to her, I say, sweetie, today I want you to have the best day of your life. I want you to help somebody else. I want you to make good choices and I want you to be grateful. That's wonderful. And it's that gratitude right there that, because we know that gratitude and, and a negative energy, a negative thought, a negative uh, spirit, emotion cannot coexist. That's right. So if something happens in your life that's unfortunate and you seek to find the learning opportunity, then you can say, you know what? I'm, I'm really grateful that I'm experiencing this today so that I can choose to never, ever, ever experience it the rest That's of my right. life. That's right. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't suck. It doesn't mean that it's not uncomfortable. That doesn't mean, I'm not taking that away. It's just, instead of looking at the, oh, this is horrible. What can I learn look, from it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and being grateful to say, hey, I'm glad I'm learning this in real time. Yeah. You no, know, so I mean, that's the... That's the gratitude side of it. The empathy side of it that you could, did you, you'd ask, because that's really the question you asked was about the empathy. It's about, you know, when you look at basic communication, now this works with, in sales, this works as a buyer's agent, a listing agent. It works in life though. It works with your, your relationship with your spouse, your wife, your partner, your husband, Everybody. whoever. It's about being in rapport and then asking adept questions and then actively listen. Right. And when you follow that you pattern go. of, yeah. yeah, yeah. When you follow that pattern of communication, what you'll find is that you'll be able to observe another person's experience. Yeah. And it's this is different. Bad. It's interesting, right? We were talking about this with my sales team this morning. This is different than what do I think that Brad is feeling right now? That's different than what is he what is he experiencing right now yeah. so that i can even intend to remove my lens my experiences my already pre-existing thoughts about how other people act behave and think and really truly get into another person's world and when i get to another person's world that's where empathy occurs that's wonderful dan i mean uh i think just the listening part alone so many people forget to to listen with their ears and, uh, you know, I, I'm a sales coach as well. And one of the things I do teach is how to find your authentic self and be true to yourself and how to be true to others and listening, like you said, and really putting yourself in someone else's shoes and, and really trying to, to figure out what's going to help that person, not yourself, but them in the transaction and in life, I think will separate a normal real estate agent from a superstar. I agree wholeheartedly. And when you utilize that strategy, I say, uh, so I wrote a book, Real Estate Evolution. And in the book, I share with uh, readers a story about a, a guy that goes in, looks for a two bedroom, one bathroom condo. And the average agent is gonna go and find them a two bedroom, one bathroom condo. The experience, the top agent is gonna really deep, deeply seek to understand why? What is it? The reason why he wants to uh, that two better one about the guy, and you may find through your through your um, active through your rapport, your your adept questions, and your actively listening, you may find that ultimately he shares. Well, I just got divorced. Well, I've got a twelve year old daughter, a twelve year old boy, and I want to be close to them. And because I don't want to be a bad dad, I don't want to be a failure, right? I don't want to be unworthy. Now, it, it, you're not going to get there with every single client. If you intend to get there with every single client, yeah. it will make you a much better real estate agent because if you think about how can you help that single new dad right. or not new dad, but single dad who's newly divorced, how can you help him obtain his goals? You're going to be able to give a far greater service than just finding a two better one bath condo. Well, it's, it's what you're saying is, Ask, ask questions, uh, ask, not only ask questions, but ask the right questions, figure out for either the strategy for each client and you can help understand and identify what their needs are. And maybe you can, can give them suggestions that maybe they didn't think about that will actually put them in a better position. 
Yeah, if you if you want to, if you struggle with what question to ask, you could just simply ask a question such as, "What is important to you?" And then you can follow that up with, "Tell me more about that." Yeah, exactly. And then Let tell me more about that. Okay, and so tell you can dig two. Me. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Dig two or three or four levels deep of tell me more about that, that is where you get to the what's real, because the surface level of what's important to you is not truly going to be what's important to you. No, I agree. They're, they're, they're at the beginning, they're just going to give you as little information as possible. When they find out that you're really trying to grasp and understand what their needs are, that's where the more willingness, it's like, it's like when you call and you say, I'd like to speak to a supervisor. And, and you know, when they go, well, no, tell me the problem. You know that you're going to have to freaking tell them the problem. Then you're going to have to tell the supervisor the problem. And then the next guy. So you tell as little as possible, right? So yeah, I yeah. get it. And, and, and that's, that, that's great. Tell me more is wonderful. And um, so, so if, you were, if you were Dan, if you were Marty from Back to the Future. Hey, all right. Hey, Marty. You had to jump back in that DeLorean. Yes, sir. And give young Dan some advice about real estate or life or whatever you want, what kind of advice would you give young Dan? I would give young Danny some life advice. And I would say to Danny- Danny boy. <laughs> I would say, you are worthy. That's you are worthy to be able to achieve your goals, achieve your, achieve your dreams, your ambitions, and you're safe to take action and to take massive action. You can do this. Yeah. I would say to young Dan, the real estate agent, I got half of it right. So young Dan as a real estate agent understood that lead generation is the foundation of business. So we're all in the lead generation business specialized in real estate sales. Okay. What young Dan, the real estate agent overlooked was the next piece of that, which was the organization building. Yeah. Because I thought naively that if I was to generate a, a ton of business and I could just you know, uh, find a, a bunch of people to work with me and I could feed them all day long. Yeah. What I what I failed to recognize was that I wasn't attracting the right people to me. If I was to go backwards, I would spend probably initially probably about 80% of my time uh, generating business and about 20% of my time generating relationships with the right people. Very important. That's gigantic, though. And then flip flop that through your career. Yeah. Yeah. Where I am today is I spend more time looking for the right relationships than I that's, do looking for listings. That's huge, don't you think? Relationship building, our business is built on relationships and on trust, in, in my opinion. It, it is. Not, and it's not just relationships about clients. It's relationships with people that you're right. in business with. It's, that's, it's that's exactly all relationships. Other agents yeah. with, treating other agents with respect. I, one of my podcasts I did was a whole thing on treating other agents with respect because, you know, I, I'll be doing deals and I'll have multiple offers. And I'll get an agent that will call me every time at the end and say, you mother effer, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you pick me? And I go, hey, well, I got some news for you. And they say, what? I say, not only did I not pick you now, but I'm never, ever going to pick you again. You'll never get a, you will never sell one of my <laughs> listings. How does that make you feel? And they say, well, you have to. And I say, I don't because my clients value my opinion. And my opinion of you isn't great because you just called me every name in the book rather than ask me why. I thought I was the only one that got those calls. Yeah, I get them all. <laughs> so Dan, what advice would you give to a new agent who's struggling in the business right now and they're just not quite sure what to do? I mean, Dan from 2007 who got into the business, you're the perfect example for these people who get into the business and they're, they're not quite sure what to do. They see everyone else moving and shaking and running and around. What can you tell these guys? So there's about 15 different ways you can get business. And some of them are going to appeal to you and some of them will not. You don't have a choice to not do one of them. Right. However, you don't have to do the other 14. Right. So my advice, works, to, right? right. So my advice to you is not only find out what works, but find out what you enjoy. If you're a relational type person, it's probably going to be open houses. If you're a dominant person, it might be calling expires. Yeah. Those two those two behaviors typically do not, you know, overlap. Mm -hmm. So figure out what is it that you love to do to be able to find business. Make sure that you focus on that first. Right. Make sure you focus on that every single day, even if it's one hour a day. A lot of coaches say three hours a day. That's what I've done for years and years. I'd rather see you do one hour a day every single day of the week so you have consistency right. and commit to three and only and then fall short of that. 
So do, do the activity of looking for that business of the thing that you find that you're passionate about, that you enjoy doing, and then do that on steroids. That's Double right. down, triple down, quadruple down, 10 times down on that one thing. So you're a big believer in finding what works for you and then don't. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. 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 One, one, one more thing on that real quick. One more thing on that is you want to find something that's going to be a short-term lead generation strategy and another thing that's a long-term lead generation strategy. Because the short term, you got to eat now. The long term, that's what's going to put a moat around your business. That's right. That's typically going to be your sphere of influence to, yep. to cultivate them and to systematically. Those are, uh, those are long with them. term gains right there. That's yes. Yeah. And let me ask you, what what do you, what, if I if I contacted one of your clients, what do you think they like best about you? One of the things that's really important to me is my uh, my vision for my company, Greetings Virginia Sales Network is to be omnipresent in regards to real estate sales in the DMV area, that's DC, Maryland, Virginia, and to exceed expectations. Good for you. Whose expectations? Well, first is the clients, then it's each other's, then it's the co cooperating brokers, it's our families, it's, 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 and ultimately it's ourselves. Yeah. So as a piece of exceeding expectations, we've, we embrace the philosophy of over-communication. So I do not believe that you could communicate too much with a client. And so what a client would say about working with me is that that dude was telling me what was going on every single step of the way. Yeah, he annoyed, he annoyed, he annoyed me. He, yeah. he was like, it was like, stop telling me what's going on. I'll take that complaint every single day. Trust me. Yeah, I and really you and I are really similar. I, I get my clients get withdrawals after, after I'm <laughs> the transaction because they're used to talking to me every day. I don't yeah. care if I've got 10 transactions. I'll call every client every day because I know just hearing my voice. And this is what I try to teach, especially new agents or agents that are trying to get themselves over that hump is it's really, if it doesn't matter what the problem during an escrow is. If you've been keeping in contact with your client, it's never as big of a deal if you've been keeping in contact with them. Yep, it's exactly. when you call them out of the blue, they haven't talked to you in three weeks and you tell them it's about to cancel, right? They're like, what? But if you prepared them, I can't tell you the amount of times, Dan, I call my client, I go, look, I know we're supposed to close next Wednesday. It's Thursday right now. We don't have loan docs. Chances are we're probably not going to have loan docs till Monday. They're going to sign them on Tuesday. That would mean we can't have been fun till Wednesday. Figure we'll close Thursday or Friday. It could go into the next week. I'll let you know that on Tuesday. And they appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. When, you don't, when you don't communicate, they, they start looking for evidence. If one small little thing starts happening, start, you know, doesn't work well, Right. then they start peeling apart every little small little you know every single other piece that they could maybe point to say right. you know what the sign had a little nick on the, on the left corner of it you know the for right. sale sign or whatever the case may be right. um if you're not communicating that's when they start looking for evidence that's if something goes little wrong tiny things yeah dan so this is a nationwide podcast we're on youtube as well as as you know every podcast uh you know platform you can get on and I'm really big on trying to help the agents that are on my uh, podcast. So if one of my listeners wanted to get a hold of you, maybe buy some investment property out there, or they're moving to DC or Virginia, uh, maybe they just like to talk to you. Maybe there's an agent who wants to refer a client. What's the best way for, for, for a prospective buyer, seller, agent to get a hold of you? Well, for those that do refer a client, I want to promise you right now that we will treat them like gold. We will update you frequently, and most importantly, we'll make you look good. You can find me by visiting www.danroshan.com. That's R-O-C-H-O-N. So that's danroshan.com. And from there, you can find all the resources for coaching for, uh, for agents, for, uh, for consumers, for buyers, for sellers, et cetera. We're going to have to, uh, we're going to maybe have to, to uh, collaborate and do a little coaching together. I'd love to. It'd be a Love lot to. of fun. Um, yeah. So, Man, so, so for many, for many of my, uh, so many of my personal listeners have become my coaching clients. And if anyone on here would also like to be a coaching client, they should go to atrepodcast.com. That's www.atrepodcast.com. You'll also be able to pull up some more Dan's information on there. And I really appreciate you being here today, Dan. It's, uh, it's been a blast and got some great information from you. It's my pleasure.